was marching when I was governor. I said, Ms. Elvis, we white folks owe your husband, Mac Elvis, as much as black folks do because he freed us too. He freed us from a system where we, uh, where we were told with whom we could associate. And we saw, we saw that we were never, Mississippi and the Deep South was never going to achieve its full promise unless we got rid of racial segregation. We did that. And that's when Mississippi began to take off. Mississippi really began to take off when we got, when we got over our fears and, our, and uh, our, our biases based on Jim Crow. Okay, in that dialogue with uh, uh, Ms. Evers, that, that reminds me of a quote that's very powerful. And let me quote, the Civil Rights Revolution did as much to free white folks as it did blacks free us from fears and prejudices, from our reluctance to embrace change, from our defense of the indefensible. W what brought that quote on? Well, it was based on some of my actual experiences. I grew, I, as, as I say, I grew up in a segregated era. I, I didn't personally think, you know, anything about segregation. It was just the way it was. And then in World War II, I was assigned as, a, as an infantry officer at Fort McClellan, Alabama, to a black infantry regiment. The Army was totally segregated. The black soldiers and white soldiers did not serve together in any of the services. So I was assigned as a white officer to a black infantry regiment where all the enlisted men were, were black and all the officers were white. Shortly after I got there, the Army desegregated the officer corps, and I found myself serving with black officers from all over the country. And we did everything together. We shared all the facilities. There was no segregation on the post. But on weekends, we'd get on the bus together, my buddies, black buddies who were officers. We'd get on the bus to go into Anniston, Alabama, and they my black officer friends would have to go to the back of the bus. They, we couldn't sit together on the bus. And of course, we couldn't eat together in a restaurant. We couldn't go to movies together. Couldn't even go to church together if we were inclined to do so. So I said to myself then, something's wrong with this system. And that we white folks uh, are as much prisoners as black folks are in terms of our inability to, to associate with each other. So. That was, uh, that was a part of the backdrop to my attitude in uh, working toward uh, eliminating discrimination and uh, racial injustice uh, in, the, in, in Mississippi. Wasn't easy to do. Uh, being in politics, uh, you walked a fairly narrow line there. And if you, got, if you got too far out in front, then you got your head cut off. So, uh, I developed a reputation uh, in, in, in the 50s and 60s uh, as a moderate, a moderate. Uh, I always thought that was a, was, a good, was a good position to take. But that was the worst thing you could say about a Mississippi politician in those years, that he was a moderate. It meant that he was, that he really didn't, he really was soft on segregation and that uh, he was not going to stand up and fight uh, to maintain segregation. So first time I ran for governor, I was defeated, largely on the basis of my moderate views on race. But I'm proud of the role I played, and uh, I wish I'd done more at the time, but I think I did nudge things along in the right direction, and as a result, we have a much better state than we had then. Now changing the subject, tell us about Tell us a little bit about your role in bringing public kindergartens to Mississippi. Well, when I was elected governor in 1979, I ran on a platform of improving education in Mississippi. That was the principal plank in my platform. We were dead last in almost every category by which you measure the quality of education in Mississippi. And what we were most dead last in was in terms of public kindergarten. Mississippi was the only state in the nation that did not have a single state-funded kindergarten. And it was, it was a hard fight to get them. 
Finally, in 1982, in the third year of my administration as governor, we passed a sweeping Education Reform Act, which did a lot, I think, to bring education, the level of education, up in Mississippi. But the linchpin in that, in that whole act was the creation of public kindergartens, where Mississippi uh, established kin public kindergartens in, in every school in the state. The consequence